So in the last few months, because of discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope, along with some of the most advanced radio telescopes, there have been quite a lot of discoveries about mysterious dark matter. The strange phenomenon we know exists, but whose origin is still not entirely understood. The phenomenon responsible for holding galaxies together and for also forming a lot of gravitational anomalies across the entire universe most visible as beautiful gravitational lenses in a lot of different locations. And so quite a few recent studies investigated dark matter from different perspectives, discovering a lot of exciting things we didn't know before, but also discovering certain things that might be pointing at something we still don't understand, or even pointing at our ideas or theories maybe not being entirely correct, which is of course expected because this is still a developing field. And so even though I kind of wanted to make this into one long video at first, I realized that there's just way too much to discuss. So we're going to break this into maybe several parts. In this first video, we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries that really kind of surprise us to some extent, helping the scientists confirm certain predictions and helping reveal certain things about dark matter that we originally thought was true. And in the next video, possibly sometimes next week, we'll discuss some of the more controversial discoveries or discoveries that just don't make sense yet. With pretty much all of this coming either from the James Webb Space Telescope, the China's FAST telescope, the largest radio telescope we have right now, or from the iconic Atacama Desert ALMA, all of which have been making incredible detailed observations of the entire universe around us. Although despite all of these observations, the measurements and the explanations are still not super precise, so there's always a chance for an error. Either way though, a lot of observations point at the existence of this invisible matter that seems to act on the universe in quite significant ways. There's really no other way to explain it right now. And quite a lot of these observations are based on what's known as gravitational lensing. Essentially, the bending of the light, as the light from a distant bright object such as a quasar passes in front of something invisible on the way to planet Earth. In many cases, it is some kind of a galaxy, and you actually see stars or even quite a lot of gas in the region in front of this quasar. As a matter of fact, if it is gas, you can even tell by the light coming from the quasar because certain types of frequencies are going to be interacting with the gas and creating a certain type of spectrum. But sometimes, the light arriving to us that's gravitational lensed seems to be lensed by something completely invisible, yet still really, really massive. And that's of course where dark matter is the only explanation we have. Currently, there is no accepted explanation for what exactly it's made out of, but a lot of scientists believe that it's probably some kind of a very light, slow-moving particle that seems to only interact with things gravitationally and not in any other way. Some of the videos in the description clarify these ideas a little bit more. And so some of the scientists using the famous Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, have recently analyzed a lot of gravitational lensing systems, specifically focusing on the system of MGJ0414, a massive galaxy distorting the light from a distant quasar that seems to be about 11 billion light years away from us. And intriguingly, inside this image, they found some strange anomalies, visualized as these unusual patches you see in the image. And these actually represent unusual chunks of what appears to be massive invisible objects or fluctuations in gravitational lensing, with each of them being less than 30,000 light years across. In other words, they could be very tiny, very, very massive galaxies that don't seem to possess a lot of stars or actually any stars and seem to be made out of just pure gas. But in this case, even this gas does not seem to change the light coming from the quasar at all, implying that it's basically invisible chunks of invisible matter. Or for the lack of better words, dark matter chunks, very thick concentrations of dark matter that seem to produce additional gravitational lensing effects. Because without these unusual chunks, the image of the quasar was predicted to look very different. Basically here, the modeling and the actual observations don't really match. But these unusual fluctuations, or these unusual concentrations of small, really dense, invisible matter, explain the observations really well. And though I guess obviously it could be maybe some kind of a large concentration of black holes, with many of them forming some kind of a very large cluster, because of the total amount of mass here and the volume of thousands of light years, this would require a huge amount of black holes that would just not make a lot of sense. 
and we would also expect some of these black holes to produce other observations as well. And so here, whatever this is, it truly seems to be invisible. No stars, no gas, nothing else. Just unusual density of invisible matter. And though this might sound weird and unusual, it's actually really not, because that's exactly what modern dark matter theories predict about the distribution of dark matter clumps across various galaxies. As a matter of fact, this seems to fit the prediction extremely well, with many previous theories explaining the existence of these chunks across various intergalactic regions. But more interestingly, this was not the only such object discovered in the last few months. In other words, another recent observation found something very similar using completely different techniques and completely different telescopes. And in this case, this object even has a name now. It's referred to as Cloud 9. It seems to be located much closer to us, near the famous galaxy M94, the galaxy that sort of looks like this, but it does not seem to be part of the galaxy and is just in the same region. And well, in this case, it's actually a slightly different object because here there was a detection of hydrogen, but absolutely no stars. In other words, this is actually a combination of invisible matter and a lot of neutral hydrogen. But there are no stars here, or at least not invisible, making this an invisible massive object. And turns out that once again, this sort of is a predicted idea. These might be known as reionization limited HI clouds, relics, a type of a dark matter halo that doesn't contain any stars. And in this case, this is actually a really exciting discovery, because in some sense, it shows us how many galaxies might have formed in the early universe. When it comes to the formation of early galaxies, it's always been believed that many of them started in regions of space where there was a much higher concentration of dark matter, representing a kind of a dark matter chunk. And eventually, a lot of these dark matter halos collapse, forming large, thick formations, with a lot of gas falling in as well, basically forming baby galaxies. This has always been the main prediction of how early galaxies formed across the universe, and how dark matter halos most likely started all of this. But a lot of these early predictions and a lot of these models have also predicted the existence of some of these halos that never truly collapsed to the end and never actually formed into real galaxies, representing a kind of a failure. So basically, dark matter halos with no stars, just some leftover primordial gas. Yet to date, none of these objects have ever been found, despite a lot of different theories claiming that they should exist. And while quite a lot of studies seem to imply that maybe this particular discovery is exactly that. This cloud 9 might really be this primordial halo that never became a galaxy. And what's even more exciting is the distance. It seems to be only about 18 million light years away from us. This is basically galactic neighborhood. With the last exciting discovery coming from something that's even bigger and even more mysterious. The ancient quasars. The brightest objects in the universe which represent active galaxies with very massive black holes that produce enormous amount of light and radiation because of tremendously large accretion disks. And intriguingly enough, there has always been a very unusual relationship between a typical quasar and its apparent mass of its dark matter halo. Or just to rephrase this, many quasars we've discovered so far, and these are usually really easy to find, surprisingly seem to have a somewhat similar relationship when it comes to the total mass of the dark matter halo around them. These halos are known to exist around most galaxies out there, and they're essentially what's holding the galaxy together. But for a lot of these quasars, a typical mass of the halo seems to be somewhat constant, approximately 10 trillion times the mass of our sun. And it seems to be constant independent of where the quasar is located. And this has been generally established by measuring the orbital velocities of nearby galaxies and by looking at hundreds and hundreds of different quasars. And so it looks like most quasars have a somewhat constant mass of dark matter halo. Even if you look at quasars really far away, billions of light years away from us, or the ones much closer. All of them seem to have had these halos, but also that maybe these halos are responsible for the quasar formation. Or in other words, there seems to be a certain mass of a dark matter halo that actually activates a galaxy to possibly become a quasar, independent of how old the galaxy is. Which implies that the gravitational influence from the halo of dark matter around the galaxy basically increases the amount of gas falling into the black hole, thus activating the galaxy 
and making black holes suddenly consume a lot of mass, usually at least 10 solar masses per year. And so in a recent study by looking at 107 different quasars at a redshift of about 6, the scientists discovered that the mass here seems to be relatively constant. Not the mass of the galaxy, the mass of the dark matter halo. This once again was discovered by looking at various galaxies moving around the quasar and measuring the total mass of the entire cluster. In this case of course implying that the dark matter halo itself seems to play an important role in activating supermassive black holes in the middle of various galaxies. Which by itself is a pretty big discovery. It might finally help us understand how exactly quasars form and what basically drives the evolution of various galaxies across the universe. But despite these very unusual, exciting discoveries in regards to dark matter, we did have some additional discoveries that seem to create a few problems, such as unusual distribution that does not match predictions, and also discoveries from the cluster known as El Gordo, which seem to also violate certain predictions of modern cosmology. And we'll talk about all of this in the next video that should be out sometimes next week or maybe in a few days from now. So if you want to learn more about this, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.